He started as a prominent songwriter in the 60s. He hit superstar in the 70s. By the 80s, he was a legend. The story of one of the greatest artists ever with new insight, including his top five songs, next on Professor of Rock. <music> Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If you're passionate, truly passionate about music, you're going to want to subscribe so you don't miss out. You know, it's hard to imagine a world without Neil Diamond, the master of that amazing, incomparable voice and the brilliant writer of some of the most endearing songs of all time. Neil Diamond is truly one of the most beloved artists ever. It's like my dad once said, I can't trust a man who doesn't love Neil Diamond. So true. I was raised on his music from the very beginning. Let's put it this way. I'm pretty sure that I saw the jazz singer more as a kid than I did Star Wars. Now, I love both, but you get the picture. When I was growing up, I wore my fandom for Neil on my sleeve, and I was kind of laughed at by kids in elementary school in the 80s. They tried to insinuate that Neil Diamond wasn't cool. Little did they know that Neil was so many levels beyond cool that at the moment that Madonna and Michael Jackson were all the rage, Neil had already attained Elvis-level cool. In fact, he was the Jewish Elvis, except Neil wrote all of his own songs. And I had to laugh a few years later when those same classmates that made fun of me for liking Neil shouted the praises of UB40 and Red Red Wine, you know, saying like, oh, this is the most amazing song ever. I love this song. And I, of course, politely pointed out that it was in fact a remake of Neil's own song. I mean, Neil Diamond spans every generation and he'll continue to. I mean, very recently I was at a high school basketball game supporting my son who was playing and I happened to be sitting near the home cheering section. It was filled with high school age kids, Generation Z as they call them. And throughout the game, you know, they played new music to pump up the crowd, you know, everything from Drake to Taylor Swift to some cheers and sporadic sing-alongs. But the moment that they played Sweet Caroline, everybody, and I mean everybody, in the entire building from Gen Z, Gen Y, Gen X, baby boomers, even a few older couples who were well over their 80s stood up in electrified solidarity and sang to the top of their lungs. Hands touching hands, reaching out, touching me, touching you. I mean, it was shaking so loudly, it shook the entire place like an earthquake. And what's more, every single living being in that arena knew every single word. Drake and Taylor's offering didn't stand a chance. And that's the thing about Neil Diamond. He is so universal. It doesn't matter the age or the background. Everybody seems to get it. Now they definitely do. Neil once stated that he has a love-hate relationship with songwriting. He Loves songwriting because it's satisfying when it works, but also hates songwriting because it forces you to dig inside yourself. I think Neil's honest feelings on those alternating emotions is what makes him preeminent. To create all those amazing songs over a 60-year career, Neil Diamond dug deep into his soul to find inspired words and sang those introspective lyrics with equal conviction and intensity. Neil, of course, Grew up in Brooklyn, New York. He attended Erasmus Hall High School and was a member of the Freshman Chorus and Choral Club along with another promising young prospect named Barbara Streisand. Now, in addition to his talent as a budding singer, he was also on the fencing team in high school and he was so skilled with a sword that he earned a fencing scholarship to attend New York University. In fact, Neil was a member of NYU's 1960 NCAA Men's Championship fencing team. He also studied pre-med, and at the end of his senior year, he started tenaciously submitting songs that he had written to music publishers that were part of the famous New York City collective called Tim Pan Alley. Neil landed a small publishing deal with Sunbeam Music Publishing, and he dropped out of college just 10 credits shy of graduating. Now, after a brief stint with Sunbeam, he was making just enough money to survive until he was hired to write at the legendary Brill Building and gradually began to make a name for himself as a lyricist. 
And after a lot of hard work and despair, he finally broke through in 1965 when he wrote Sunday and Me, which became a top 20 hit for Jay and the Americans. And the rest is history. Neil Diamond became one of the most prolific and revered singer-songwriters ever, with worldwide record sales amassing over 100 million records and attaining a staggering 37 top 40 hits. His rugged baritone is one of the most recognizable voices of the rock era, often imitated but never duplicated. The impact of Neil Diamond's music on pop culture cannot be understated. His compositions are timeless treasures in the great American songbook, and along with you know, Billy Joel, Paul Simon, Bruce Springsteen, and a few others, makes up a combined force for the last 60 years that could, in my opinion, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cole Porter, George and Ira Gershwin, Johnny Mercer, and the other great American songwriters from the 60 years before that. Now, here is my Neil Diamond fiver. I have to say that this is one of the most difficult fivers that I've ever attempted to this point. I mean, my Neil Diamond fiver could easily contain like 25 songs, but here we go. Number five, Love on the Rocks. Neil wrote this modern day saloon song with French composer Gilbert Bicou, who wrote another pop standard, What Now My Love. It was released as a single from the film soundtrack, The Jazz Singer. Now the song went all the way to number two, Kept off the top spot by Just Like Starting Over by John Lennon. Love on the Rocks is an incredible ballad in the true diamond style. Neil's raw-throated and heart-wrenching vocal turns this bona fide saloon song into the rockier's version of One For My Baby. It's a breathtaking performance and a heartbreaking record. The song was later covered by Gladys Knight and an interesting reading by The Darkness. Number four, his scorching performance of Cherry Cherry on his double platinum Hot August Night live album. Now the studio version of Cherry Cherry was originally released in 1966 and it was Neil's first big hit, reaching number six on the Billboard Hot 100. But it was his live version of the song on the first Hot August Night live album that really showcased Neil's dynamic stage presence at the peak of his live performances. I mean, he killed it, you know, complete with grunts, howls, and just this incredible vocal delivery. The live version of Cherry Cherry was one of the tracks that was recorded from a Neil Diamond concert on Saturday, August 24th in 1972, which was the final show in a series of 10 straight sold out concerts at the Greek Theater in LA. The live version of Cherry Chair was also released as a single. It peaked at number 31 on the pop chart in 73. Go back and listen to this song and remember that many later hit songs were inspired by the chord progression, including What I Like About You by The Romantics and R.O.C.K. in the USA by John Mellencamp and a few others. Yes, yes, you do. Number three, if you know what I mean, from Neil's 1976 album, Beautiful Noise. Now this was Neil Diamond's third number one hit on the AC charts for two weeks. I'm sure that Neil fans all over are gonna call me out for leaving out about 25 other songs that I could have put in this slot, but I'll tell you what, go listen to this song with a really good pair of headphones, close your eyes and feel this song. It is achingly beautiful. It's truly one of Neil's most inspired songs. Now, he stated that the song is a tender recollection of a relationship from his teens in which he successfully seduced a significantly older woman. The music is undeniably perfect, and it threads the needle of Neil's voice, you know, starting with the lyric, when the night returns, just like a friend when the evening comes to set me free. Poetry. And then he goes into the bridge, can you hear it, babe? Nobody can sing the word babe like Neil Diamond. I also love the part where he says, here's to the songs we used to sing and here's to the times we used to know. It's hard to hold them in our arms again, but hard to let them go. Indeed. Number two, Sweet Caroline. When you're listening to Neil Diamond sing Sweet Caroline, 
Good times never seem so good, seriously. As undeniably catchy as Sweet Caroline is, it's gonna surprise you to learn that this song did not go to number one. In fact, it peaked at number four on the Billboard Hot 100 and number three on the AC charts. It's become more massive every year since that point. It's now a stadium rock classic where you can often hear 50 to 100,000 fans from anywhere in the world singing the chorus. Touching me. While the song's being played at venues and major sporting events, now Neil's inspiration for Sweet Caroline was President John F. Kennedy's daughter Caroline, who was 11 years old at the time the song was released in 1969. 50 years later in 2019, Sweet Caroline was selected by the Library of Congress for preservation in the National Recording Registry for being culturally, historically significant. Neil describes the song in his own words as full of gravel, potholes, left turns and right turns. We wouldn't want it any other way. And number one, America. This song went to number one on the AC charts and number eight on the Hot 100. And it's the show-stopping grand finale of the jazz singer. Although the original recording sounds live, it was recorded in the studio and the crowd noise was added later. Now, I'll be straight up with you here. I cannot listen to this song without breaking down. Neil Diamond wrote a song about the history of immigration to the United States, both during the 1900s up to that present time. The lyrics, far, we've been traveling far without a home, but not without a star. Free, only want to be free. We huddle close, hang on to a dream. How could anyone in this world not embrace this perfectly written and sung mantra? To me, it's beyond a pop song. It's deeply spiritual and empowering. It's a grand anthem that's ignited by Neil's typically Herculean melody, his spirited arrangement, and his majestic vocal. It's also about holding on to a dream no matter the cost. Now, at the end, when he incorporates My Country Tis of Thee, my heart just swells and the tears roll down. Today, my country tis of thee, Today, sweet land of liberty. Today. Two unforgettable moments that I've witnessed with this song that I want to share. One of them, I was at a championship basketball game when they played this song right after the national anthem, and I was sitting next to a section for veterans. All of them were standing in uniform. And when it got to the lyric, freedom's light, burning warm, almost every veteran standing had tears running down their cheeks. I just lost it, it was amazing. Another time is when I was at a Neil concert and he was singing it and he got to the part, every time that flag's unfurled, they're coming to America. And on that note, as in many concerts, the American flag was unfurled right there it's just so moving. Neil Diamond is a treasure. We're so blessed to have his music and his spirit. I don't say this about many bands, but there are two kinds of people in this world. Those who love Neil Diamond and those who are lying through their teeth. Now, all the songs I've mentioned are in the playlist below that we've created. Go and listen to them. Also, leave a comment on Neil. What is your fiver? What are your feelings about this icon? Also, if you like this content, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. If you want to sign up to be notified about our upcoming premium content space, sign up below in the description. Now, until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Peace.